Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. Fierce flame sending a wall of smoke billowing over the South Bay. Good evening, I'm Rael Creighton. 10 News reporter Hannah Mullins live in Otay Mesa with the hurdles that crews were up against. Fire crews pulled up and found a nasty fire torching in that scrapyard. If you take a look around, water is covering this entire area. But at first, the problem was the nearest fire hydrant is blocks away, and the fireball was growing fast. Burning car parts from countless cars pumped out smoke so thick you couldn't see through it. Multiple fire crews lined up their trucks and had to daisy chain a half mile of hose. Then they threw up the aerial ladders to blast the fire with water. They've been going strong for hours now. There are just mounds of fuel for the flames to feed on. They also have to spread out the metal so it can cool off. So it is both tricky and risky. Well, they have heat exhaustion. They're working hard. They're in a lot of PPE. That's the biggest risk. Smoke inhalation, if they're in the smoke, they could fall, trip hazards, any kind of exploding propane tanks. There's likely little left of anything they were hoping to salvage out here. We're live in Otay Mesa, Hannah Mullins, 10 News. Hannah, thank you. New today, a new addition to Chicano Park. This mural unveiled in a Palm Sunday ceremony. It reads, no border wall. 10 News reporter Jessica Chen spoke to the man behind the mural about the message that he's hoping to send. The mass was held right here, right next to this new painting. Now I spoke with the organization who funded this, and they say the message is about compassion and love for those who want to immigrate to the U.S. More than 100 people crowded Chicano Park to mark Palm Sunday witness the unveiling of this new mural. Enrique Morona says he's been waiting nearly 10 years. The important people are all the migrants, all the migrants that are represented. To see this come to light. So we say no border wall, love has no borders, and no more deaths. Those are the three messages. And he hopes with its unveiling at Chicano Park today, people will take in the message. The wall is just a symbol of hate towards Mexicans, towards Mexico, towards all of Latin America. Morones heads Border Angels, a nonprofit that advocates for migrant farm workers and immigrant rights. The organization paid for the mural. He says they're advocating for human rights and humane immigration reform. What is the right way? There's no line for them to get into. 10 News spoke with Robert Luton with the San Diegans for Secure Borders Coalition this weekend, and he says the immigration policy does need to change. We tell elected officials to do again, is to try to secure the border so that we don't add to the numbers that we already have. He says it's about following the law. What we try to do is not cast any blame towards individuals, but look at the system as a, in totality. Morona says this is the change he'd like to see. Everybody wants border security, but we want humane policy. Now, Enrique with Border Angels says this mural also features people he's worked with that share his message. In Chicano Park, Jessica Chen, 10 News. Jessica, thank you. New information now. Police identifying the man who was plowed over and killed by a car last week. He's been identified as Gerald Allen Crosby. The medical examiner says he was 50 years old and, quote, living a transient lifestyle. The victim was walking in the crosswalk on Laurel Street and Pacific Highway in Little Italy. The SUV that hit him took off, but the 10 News breaking news tracker there when David Dominguez was arrested a few hours later, he's facing multiple felony charges. Well, a plane full of people heading to San Diego had to make an emergency landing after the plane's fire alarm went off. This is a picture from the Modesto Fire Department of Alaska, the Alaska Airlines plane uh, safe on the ground at the moment. Firefighters say they got reports of a possible fire in the plane's cargo area. The plane fire extinguishment system had activated, but investigators couldn't find any signs of a fire. 62 passengers and crew had to take a bus back to Sacramento. Turning to our weather now, a live look outside. It was a picture perfect day in San Diego. I want to say it was, it says 68 right now. It was in the 60s earlier. Tennis Pinpoint Weather anchor Jennifer De La Cruz with more great weather on the way. It was definitely a great way to end the weekend. We had a whole lot of sunshine for your Saturday and Sunday, and that trend is going to be continuing throughout the week. Taking a live look outside in Del Mar looks really great right now. A lot of people out there enjoying the beach as they should be to wrap up their weekend temperatures right now mostly in the 60s for San Diego County 61 in La Jolla 64 in Carlsbad and 68 
In Chula Vista, our 24 hour temperature change shows us we're just slightly warmer than where we were yesterday. Five degrees warmer though in El Cajon, five degrees warmer in Poway. For the rest of the evening, this is what it looks like. 63 degrees on the coast with partly cloudy skies at six o'clock. Driving down to 59 degrees by 8 o'clock tonight. Inland communities are going to see a little less sky cover and we're going to be really nice heading into the next day. Overnight lows tonight dropping down to 55 degrees on the coast. 49 for your inland communities. Feeling breezy out there. We could see some gusts up to 20 miles per hour throughout the county tonight, so be mindful of that. Otherwise, it's looking pretty good, and I'm tracking a warm up on the way in your seven day forecast. Sounds good, Jennifer. We'll wait for that. Meantime, Northern Californians still digging out from winter weather. Plows were out clearing driveways while others worked tirelessly to use shovels to clear the sidewalks. One woman has to climb a snow bank to get into her home in Placer County, California. People living in the area are shocked that well into April, the snow is still burying them. This is this is absolutely mind blowing to me right now. The fact is two years ago I was mountain biking right now. I was hanging out, jumping in the lake. Yeah, this is and I mean this year, look, we still got 20 foot snow banks around here. Yeah, mind blowing indeed. Many say that they're still enjoying the perks of the fresh powder, though, like a day of skiing and snowboarding. Well, people traveling home outraged after Delta Airlines canceled some 350 flights yesterday. The move comes after severe thunderstorms caused big disruptions at its hub airport in Atlanta last week. Travelers say even though the weather is to blame, the airline could have handled the situation better. Many people slept at the airport waiting to get on a rescheduled flight home. Others say they are out of the extra money for hotels. Several Delta flights to San Diego were delayed today. Now to a developing story, ISIS claiming responsibility for two bombings in Egypt, which killed dozens of people and injured hundreds more. Yeah. An explosion captured on camera in the middle of a Christian mass service. It happened at a church just north of Cairo, turning Palm Sunday into a tragedy. The blast littered the church with debris, leaders around the world condemning the blast. And to blow up some Christian churches on e Palm Sunday in Egypt is just despicable. It shows that we have to redouble our efforts against ISIS. As survivors tried to rescue the dead and the wounded, a second attack outside the church in Alexandria. The man blew himself up outside of a cathedral. The president of Egypt has declared a state of emergency. Well, now to the strike on Syria. Big questions in the wake of President Trump's order to launch missiles on an air base. ABC's David Wright reports supporters and critics now demanding to know what the long term strategy is for dealing with the region. New bombing in Syria. The regime of Bashar al Assad defiant even after those U.S. airstrikes. The airfield struck by 59 American missiles back up and running. Syria's Russian-made fighter bombers armed for battle. And the rebel-held region that was the target of last week's horrific chemical attack, targeted by warplanes again. So what impact did the U.S. attack have? What happened this week was really one of the president's um, finest hours. He won't stop here. If he needs to do more, he will do more. U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley suggested regime change may now be a goal for the Trump administration. We don't see a peaceful Syria with Assad in there. But Secretary of State Rex Tillerson wouldn't go there on this week. And we're asking and calling on Bashar al-Assad to cease the use of these weapons. Other than that, there is no change to our military posture. The president's new national security advisor tried to clear things up. Well, both Secretary Tillerson and Ambassador Haley are, are right about this. There has to be a degree of, uh, of simultaneous activity. Even members of the president's own party are confused. I'm concerned, and there seems to be a difference between what uh, Ambassador Haley is saying, as she said last night, that Assad really has no future, and what I heard this morning from Secretary Tillerson. Today, the military commanders defending the Assad regime threatened reprisals for any future U.S. attacks. A joint statement from Russia, Iran, and Hezbollah said the United States crossed red lines by attacking Syria, adding Russia and Iran will not allow the United States to be the only superpower in the world. This week, Secretary Tillerson heads to Moscow, hoping to mend fences with the Russians. David Wright, ABC News, Palm Beach. Hands off Syria! Hands off Syria! 
About two dozen San Diegans showing their opposition to the airstrike in Syria in downtown today. They marched carrying signs and chanted near the federal building. Organizers say they want an independent investigation into the chemical weapons attack in Syria before any more military intervention. The San Diego sailors setting a course toward the Korean Peninsula. Instead of turning toward Australia, the USS Vincent strike group took orders to head north. The Pentagon says it's a direct response to a Scud missile North Korea fired into the ocean. The Carl Vincent strike group pulled out of the port here in San Diego about three months ago. Well, a man accused of stealing guns and mailing a manifesto to the president is on the run tonight. Police say Joseph Jakubowski stole weapons from a gun store in Wisconsin last week. They say he then set his car on fire, threatened to harm public schools and officials, and mailed a 161-page manifesto to President Trump detailing anti-government grievances. The FBI is offering a $10,000 reward for information leading to his arrest. Tomorrow, San Diego City Council will be discussing drone safety. The council is considering giving police the authority to cite reckless users, including those who fly their drones near airports and emergency operations. If that plan passes, violators could face a $1,000 fine or six months in jail. New video tonight, a man risking his life to save his best friend, the dangerous misstep after he gets the dog out of the frozen pond. And more fallout from Kendall Jenner's controversial Pepsi ad, but it's not about the ad's message. Why well, the city of San Francisco is considering legal action. A lot of sunshine in store to start your week. A warm up keeping us slightly above average for this time of year. I'll tell you how long the sunshine will last coming up in your seven day forecast.